Thank you, Dirk, and hello again. <laughs> um, I'd like to start with a small disclaimer because the title of my presentation may seem a bit broader than, than it is. This is the status quo on measurement resulting from our work. So our understanding of that as we are developing a global roadmap on food, food waste reduction in, in tourism uh, within the One Planet uh, Sustainable Tourism Program. Um, just as a reminder from the chat this morning, food waste is what we have identified as the second entry point for circularity in the tourism value chain, together with plastics, and uh, which UNWTO is, is prioritizing. Um, I, I take advantage of this opportunity to inform you that we have created a repository uh, of tools and resources on circular economy and tourism that is now accessible through the website. So you're invited to share any cases that you may have so we can disseminate them. And okay, let's, let's start by speaking a little bit about the, the global food system. What, what is it? What's the challenge ahead of us? Well, I can tell you it's big. The food system is today the single biggest threat to nature and it leads, leads to approximately 70% of biodiversity loss, including deforestation, overfishing, and the conversion of habitats for agriculture. Basically, approximately half of uh, habitable land is occupied by agriculture to produce food. Um, on top of that, one third of the food that is produced for human consumption is wasted. And that equals to more or less 30% of greenhouse gas emissions globally, meaning if food waste was a country, this will be the third emitter globally. Um, I guess that's the reason why the international community included one target in the Agenda 2030 specifically focusing on food waste, which basically uh, aims to halve food waste by 2030. And in tourism, we could be wasting more or less 11 billion tourist meals per year. You may be wondering how I did that calculation. I will tell you. So uh, the forecast, as you know, for international tourism arrivals is 1.8 billion by 2030. In a report we did with the ITF, we also projected domestic by 2030. And the arrivals would be more or less 15.6 billion. So if you add those two, and multiply by two meals per day per person, then you get to 34 billion. And yeah, basically that's how I got it. I've never been too good in math, but I guess it's pretty scary. <laughs> uh, so tourism should be part of the solution. We really need to do something, especially when many destinations have uh, competitive advantages when it comes to gastronomy. Uh, as it has already been mentioned, we cannot measure what we cannot understand. So let's take a look at the food value chain. What is the food value chain? Food value chain in, involves different steps. You can see on the slide from the very beginning, the input that we put on the, on the ground so that a crop can flourish and then how it's processed, how it's transported, how it's sold, and then how it's served, and then how it's consumed, and then how it's disposed. So there are a lot of steps but where can tourism have an actual influence? And sorry, I forgot the first part of the value chain is what we consider food, what, what, what can lead to food loss. The second part is what can lead to food waste. That's a bit the definition, the difference in those terms. So where can tourism have an impact? Normally, uh, what we think is that it is under the food service that we can have more of an impact and under consumption and also under disposal. It's clear that sometimes you can also influence production, but maybe not necessarily at the scale that we need. So it's not, it's not to be neglected, but if we really want to drive change, it is under the service uh, step of the, of the value chain that we need to focus. And this is placing tourism in a quite good position because the more the food advances through the value chain, the more it carries costs also environmentally and economically. So if the food is wasted when it's primary production, it has less environmental impact and less cost impact than if it's wasted at the end of the food chain by a consumer. So we are there, what is more risky to be wasting. Let's change that. What are the food challenges in, in tourism? 
Well, we reviewed national tourism policies and we see that 77% of uh, national tourism policies speak of food, but they speak of food from the gastronomy point of view. And then the references are decreasing, meaning 51% of policies are concerned with procurement and how we should minimize leakages by uh, creating linkages with uh, producers. 23% speak of more sustainable menus, 19% speak of waste, and just three speak of all of them at the same time. So there's a lot of work to be done at the policy level. At the same time, we have uh, data from uh, companies that are using smart meters that are basically the ones that have more of the data that exists, which say that food waste in, in hospitality represents the loss of uh, 100 billion annually. And we also know that between 20 and 60% of the food that is purchased by a hotel is wasted. So it's a lot. Uh, we also know tourism businesses source in many occasions from international markets and that um, the measurement of food is limited. So what do we need to do to meet the SG 12.3 target? Obviously, we need collaboration and we need concerted efforts. And these efforts need to focus on what is called the food and drink material hierarchy, starting from preventing food waste and uh, surplus. So making sure you reduce as much as possible the food waste. Then with the food waste that you have, making sure that you redistribute it, you know, redistribute your surplus to people. And then whatever is left from that second step that you divert from landfill, either into animal feed or into biomaterial processing, like anaerobic digestion, et cetera. That's actually the scope of the global roadmap. It is holistic and it hopes to provide to some stakeholders with a framework to embrace the sustainable management of food so that food never becomes waste. Again, what food measurement challenges do we see in tourism? Nothing new. Estimates do not describe the sector, so we have global estimates but not necessarily for tourism. We don't have reference values by type of businesses. We have a lot of smart scales, as I mentioned, that are generating a lot of data, but that's proprietary data from companies. We have many estimates that are not comparable, and we are making conversions into CO2 impact, but this conversion doesn't take into account the, the CO2 embedded in the life cycle, meaning it's a very simple calculation. Like if you prevent one ton of food waste, uh, th that's equal to three point tons of CO2 re uh, reduced, and yeah, it's very simplistic. There's a lot of much more carbon embedded in, in that we are able to calculate. And then of course, there's a clear business case for savings, but it's undocumented. So we just have anecdotal evidence of a hotel which saved X money, but is not exactly uh, globally representative. So what's the roadmap uh, proposing as targets and milestones, taking into account that the, 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 the focus is on accommodation and crews. Basically, we are proposing targets for Prevention, so halving food per guest night in the case of accommodation and per guest day in the cruise lines. And also we are proposing a target for diversion for both, which for the accommodation is diverting 100% of food from lands, landfill and where the infrastructure doesn't exist, then half of it. And for the cruise liners is focusing on increasing the capacity to process the food waste on board to avoid the need to discharge in the sea. What information do we need to demonstrate progress? Uh, you can see the indicators on, on the slide. Basically, we are anchoring everything on the metric of total food waste per annum, metric tons. And again, same as Olivia was presenting for the plastics, we need an intensity metric. We need to cater for occupancy variations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, the second metric is total number of guest days or nights uh, per annum. So, you can combine both and know. Um, what's the, the food waste per, per guest day or night. And then we're also proposing a few metrics for the diversion um, activities. In addition, there are other comparable and additional intensity metrics with which maybe some hoteliers in the industry are already using, and that's fine, as long as they come up to the, let's say, ultimate metric of total uh, food waste per, per annum. The roadmap provides guidance on how to address the challenge of measurement and 
for instance, suggest defining a 12 month, pe month period, as Olivia was saying before, so that we can track progress on an annual basis, that you quantify the tonnage of, of food waste, and if possible, you quantify also uh, the tonnage diverted to each destination, meaning how much you redistribute to people, how much you send to animal feed, how much you send to bio-based uh, or, or biochemical pro uh, processing, etc. cetera. Uh, it allows companies to define whether they include or not an edible parts, because that's how the food waste, food loss and waste standard is doing it. It is considered that, yeah, probably the excellent practice would be to include an edible parts, but some companies feel that weighting bones is really increasing the, the, the weight, so they, they exclude it, and this is fine. It's uh, accepted by the food loss and waste protocol. And then we ask them to express food waste in terms of food waste uh, per guest night and day, and to describe how they measured. Because there's a lot of business models and is not at present at least, we think is not necessary to prescribe a uniform uh, method as long as the uniform parameters are being followed. And it, it, I guess that we think it's best for each organization to determine how to effectively measure. Uh, taking into account their operations, and uh, we hope that with the guidance we will arrive to some comparability, but we need action first to be able to compare. And in the roadmap, we are also recommending these methodologies. Um, the first one is the one that Glenn was making reference to, the WWF uh, slash Greenview Hotel Waste Measurement Methodology, which is uh, broader than food waste, but very, very complete in the way it addresses uh, food waste and comes with uh, spreadsheets and so on. There is also a tool which is from UNEP on resource efficiency uh, monitoring, another tool from RAP, it's a UK uh, consultancy on food loss and waste data, it's a capture sheet, and then of course you have plenty of companies uh, with smart meters like we know, Lean Path, etc., that are doing great work, but you have to pay for it, of course. And uh, some of the bigger multinationals, they have their own bespoke uh, mechanisms, because they have large teams, so they can focus on developing what suits them best. And yeah, just as a reminder that the roadmap, uh, which we hope to launch in, in December, is uh, trying to encourage stakeholders to and embrace the sustainable food management in, in tourism and provides guidance for the four steps that you see on the screen. So procurement, preparation, consumption, and also waste uh, management so that food never becomes waste. That's all. Thank you.